For this latest episode of the basics of photography from Yorkshire Photo Walks, I've come down to the banks of the majestic River Air, one of the most iconic rivers in the county, and the site and inspiration of my first ever photography project. I think the term photography project scares a lot of people. They might think it's a bit too highbrow, maybe a bit too much like hard work, or they might not have the inspiration to get themselves started. But it can be a really good way of honing your photography skills. So in this video I'm going to outline how you can do it and give you a few project ideas to get you started. So if you feel like your photography has been getting into a bit of a rut lately, taking lots of photographs of the same thing all the time, or taking hundreds and hundreds of shots and just relying on one or two, then join me here on the banks of the River Air to start your own photography project and never look back. I suppose the first question I've got to field is, what is a photography project? Well, to be honest, it can be, quite frankly, anything you would like it to be. All you need is a subject on which to focus, and a bit of inspiration to get you going. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to give you five different week-long project ideas to help you to get kick-started into making your own photography project. But before we get there, I just want to explain how important it is to realise that photography projects aren't necessarily too much like hard work, or even worse, they're a bit too highbrow. I think a lot of people associate photography projects with conceptual photographic art, or maybe even photojournalism, with photographers going out with briefs to shoot for editorials. But photography projects don't necessarily have to be like that. Now, let me use the example of sport. Now, when you take up a sport, you have to do training to get into it properly. If we take golf, for example, if you go out and play golf all the time, then yes, you're going to improve your skills, but you probably want to go to the driving range to practice your swing before you go out onto the golf course. Likewise, in terms of football, Premier League footballers don't just go out every Saturday and play football. They train in the week, trying to get their fitness levels up. Likewise, rugby players will put effort into strengthening themselves so they match fit, rather than just going out to play rugby all the time. And we all know the link between boxers and skipping to help them get fit and to improve their footwork, even though it doesn't necessarily have much to do with what they get up to when they finally get in the ring. In a way, producing a photography project is a very similar process. It's almost like photography training. When you go out and take a photography project, you often narrow your field of focus down to a specific subject, theme or technique within photography. Narrowing your focus down to that one thing not only helps you to become a lot more observant of the things around you, it also helps you to concentrate and think a lot more about what you're photographing and think a lot more about how you're photographing it. So after you've made a photography project and go out and take photographs for yourself, you'll notice that you start looking at things in a lot more detail and thinking a lot more about how you produce the photographs that you make. This is a great way of getting you out of that rut and creating a lot more diverse range of photographs. My first foray into the wonderful world of project photography came whilst I was studying at the University of Bradford. We were told to go away and research photographers that inspired us, and then copy off their style of work to produce a project of our own. 
not really knowing very many photographers at that time. I just blindly typed into Google famous Yorkshire photographers, just hoping that somebody of interest would crop up. As well as lots of wedding photographers and people like that, I did come across a chap called John Davis. Not a Yorkshireman himself, but he's become famous for photographing large format black and white industrial northern landscapes. Now this was a style that was completely different to mine at the time, but it really inspired me and changed my perspective of what photography could be. He also told stories of how man impacted on nature and also nature impacted on man. So for my project, I decided to follow the River Air from its source up near Malham Tarn in the Yorkshire Dales via its industrial heartlands of Bradford and Leeds, via the confluences with the Ouse and Humber and finally out into the North Sea. I whittled the project down to just 12 photographs, each of which copied off John Davis's black and white 4x3 aspect ratio photographic style, often photographed from high vantage points. Now you might be thinking that that's a bit deep for how deep you want to go into your project photography. But you've got to remember that when I started this project I was very green behind the ears. I didn't really know very much about photography at all. I just picked out John Davies's style, copied it and ran with it. In a moment I'm going to run you through five different short week-long project ideas that like my river project are sure to kickstart your photography and take you out of any rut that you might be in, photographing the same thing over and over again. The first project idea that I'd like to share with you is a reasonably easy one and one that's really good to get you started. It's called the Colour Project. What I'd like you to do is choose a single colour. It could be your favourite colour or a colour that you just think generally stands out. For a whole week, I'd like you to make that colour the dominant colour in all of the photographs that you make. It doesn't mean that the whole photograph has to be that colour. It could be that the subject is that colour, or the background to your subject is that colour. Just make sure that you concentrate on it for that whole week and not deviate from the project theme. The second project idea is very similar in terms of the concept, but it's the black and white project. For a whole week, photograph all of the photographs that you make in black and white, no matter what it is that you're photographing. It's a good idea to make sure that your camera is set up to take black and white photographs, so you can actually see what the results are in camera, rather than having to change the photographs to black and white in post-production afterwards. If you want to learn more about black and white photography, I've got a Basics of Photography video on that subject, the link to which should be at the top of the screen right now. The beauty of these first two projects is that they both help you to see the world in a different way. They should also help you to hone your attention to different types of subject matter, because you'll often find that in black and white, for example, some subjects work fantastically and others just don't work at all. And obviously, when you're looking at specific colours, then you're obviously going to have to find the colour that you've chosen, rather than relying on other subjects that you would usually photograph. It'll also draw your eye to the way light and shade works within photography, because sometimes contrast can really make a photograph, and if you're not looking for contrast in general terms with your photography, then these two projects are sure to help you to look at that and make the most of it in the best way possible. The third project idea that I'd like to share with you is called the Location Project. For this project, you choose a location and just photograph that location for a whole week. Now, my advice with this one is to not choose a huge location like the Yorkshire Dales National Park or a city because you're going to be spoilt for choice with what you photograph. The whole idea of this project is to hone your vision down to a single type of photograph or single type of subject. So you could choose the road that you live on, you could choose your house and garden, or if you're feeling really adventurous, you could just choose a single room in your house. This will really help you to identify the subjects that interest you, and it will also help you to think 
about how you photograph each of those subjects individually. The fourth project idea that I'm going to share with you copies off the idea that I did when I did the river project. It's called the emulation project. It's where you choose a photographer of your choice that inspires you and you copy off their style of work. Now if you didn't know very many photographers like I didn't when I started the river project, Google is a great way to start. Maybe even Instagram or Flickr for lesser known photographers that might just really inspire you. My advice with this one is to not go as deep into it as I did when I was doing the river project. Remember that was a university project that I was looking for marks on. For this you're just hoping to improve your photography skills. So when you go into this project, look at the way that the photographer uses light, the way that they frame their photographs, the way that they compose them, the aspect ratio or crop format that they use, and copy off those things. You'll find that you start looking at the world through different people's eyes rather than your own. And this can really open your eyes to different types of photography and also different ways of thinking about and observing the world around you. The fifth and final project idea that I'd like to share with you is a bit more advanced, so I recommend doing all of the other projects first before you even contemplate starting on this one. It might even be something that you return to further down the line when you become a lot more confident with the photographs that you take and in the processes that go into making those photographs. It's called the Storytelling Project. Now I know storytelling is quite a contentious issue in photography. Some people just like to take photographs of pretty things and things that inspire them. Other people like to tell a bit of a background story to their subject. And this will really help you to do that if that's the sort of photography that you're interested in. What I'd like you to do is choose a page in your favourite novel or even the lyrics of your favourite song and photograph them in your own way. If it's a page in your favourite novel, you could maybe do a photograph per paragraph, or if it's your favourite song, then you could do a photograph per verse. Try and be as relaxed as you can when you approach this project, and try not to be too literal with the photographs that you make. Think about how the, the song or the, the words in the novel make you feel, and try and photograph that. I know we're going quite deep now, so don't be put off by this project. Only do it if this is the sort of photography that you're interested in and you would like to push your photography skills to the next level. If not, then the first four will easily put you on the right track to improving your photography skills. I owe a lot to this river. It really inspired me doing the river project and it's moulded me into the photographer that I am today. I'd even go as far as saying that I wouldn't be stood here talking to you today if it wasn't for the River Air, because I probably wouldn't have taken up photography in as much detail as I have done, let alone started to teach it. If you've been inspired by this video and would like to start your own photography project and maybe learn more about photography, then why not subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done or so already for more videos like this and to find out about unique and inspirational Yorkshire photography locations. If you'd like to learn about photography practically out in the field, then check out our website yorkshirephotowalks.com for our latest photo walk schedule, and you could be joining me in a unique and inspirational Yorkshire location just like this one. If you'd like to share the photographs from the projects that you're about to start, then why not do it through Facebook and Instagram by following us at Photo Walks Yorks. By doing that, you can also keep up with our latest news and photo walk photographs. I'm going to leave you now with the photographs that I took for the River Project. When you look at them, I'd like you to bear in mind that when I did this project, I hardly knew anything about photography. I was just pointing and shooting, really, on the automatic setting but just copying that style of John Davis. It goes to show that no matter how new you are to photography, a photography project can improve your photography skills exponentially. Thank you very much for watching, best of luck with those projects, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.